Okay, thank you. Uh, so today I will talk about online influence maximization. This is a uh, joint work with C.U. Lei, uh, Louis Mo, Reynold Chang, and Pierre Senelar. So before I talk the, about the online uh, influence maximization, I will go uh, quickly uh, over uh, the offline version of the influence maximization, the classic influence maximization problem, which, as probably many of you know, it's a important problem in, uh, in social network in general with applications in marketing or computational advertising and so on. So roughly uh, the objective is given a promotion budget of some sort, to, to, we want to maximize the influence uh, spread of this, uh, of some kind of message in the social network and this is, uh, this is linked to the word of mouth effect. Slightly more, uh, uh, more formal, the, when you have given an influence graph and uh, some kind of model of propagation, you want to select a number of seeds or influence in the social graph so that this, uh, this influence is maximized. So what's the influence graph? Inf the influence graph is simply the social graph where you have uh, vertices as users and edges as, uh, as followship, re follow relationship, friendship relations, uh, a social network, but with a function uh, with a function p that associates for every edge an influence probability with the semantics that uh, uh, the saying that the probability between uh, the probability that user i influences user j is this. Uh, so given this uh, influence graph, uh, the, there are several models of, uh, of uh, influence propagation. This simplest maybe and the most intuitive one uh, would be the independent uh, cascade model, which is a discrete uh, time model of propagation in which at time zero you activate the seed you want to start the process from and then it's an iterative process when a node, having a node i activated at time t including zero obviously, uh, the influence is propagated at t plus one to the neighbors uh, j of i uh, independently with probability and the probabilities on edges. Once, and importantly, once a node is activated, it cannot be deactivated or activated again. So this process at, at some point stops. Uh, but since we are dealing with probabilities, this, uh, this means that an independent cascade model is a stochastic process. So the problem actually tries to optimize the expected simple, uh, influence spread which we denote as sigma s, from a set of seeds, of k seeds. Uh, this is, uh, as all good things in life, computationally hard, and it actually has two sources of hardness. Uh, first of all, computing the expected influence spread is hard because it reduces to evaluating probabilistic, probabilistic formulas over almost all paths in the graph sometimes. And even if you would know this influence uh, spread, the com computing the, selecting these cases and computing the influence maximization problem is MP hard because it, it, it reduces to, uh, to the maximization of a submodular function subject to a constraint, the constraint being the number of, the number of seeds. There are various solutions, there are basically two different threads of research, one for computing the, uh, the expected influence spread, which the most used is the Monte Carlo simulation with, uh, with error guarantees and so on. And for solving the influence pro maximization problem, we know that the greedy approximation algorithm is a constant, constant approximation to the given uh, exp uh, the influence spreads. And there are multiple algorithms. Uh, an estimator self was the used a long time, but since uh, a few years ago, Tim and Tim Plus, which use actually a different, uh, a different kind of reasoning, are uh, are uh, probably the, the most scalable algorithms that uh, compute influence spread, but we would don't really care about this here. Mm -hmm. And all this uh, assumes that uh, we know we are given the influence graph, we are given these probabilities, but this might not be, might be too strong an assumption. So actually asked ourselves this question, what if we know the social graph, but we don't know the probabilities because you know, the influence probabilities we know might come from analyzing activation logs that are a few years old and so on. But we still want to maximize this influence, still with a budget. 
so obviously we still want to reason a bit on the on the on the inference graph. So we want to have a model, uh, kind of an uncertain model of the probabilistic graph, and this uh, this links to a classic trade-off between uh, exploration, trying to find more about this model, trying to find out more about this influence, this influence probabilities, and exploitation in which we use this model and try to and try to do influence maximization, and. It's easy to see that this lends itself to a iterative process over several rounds in which in each round we try to we try to choose between these two uh, these two branches and this is uh, the setting of uh, reinforcement learning or it, it it can be linked to multi armed uh, bandits so to summarize uh, the the problem we are dealing with is to maximize the influence spread given a budget of several runs and each round consisting of choosing k seeds in, uh, in the network. And uh, in this paper, we, uh, our contribution is actually to, to, uh, to uh, show an on uh, online framework. That's why we call it online, because we don't know we, we actually have a continuous feedback loop of, uh, of this uh, refinement and uh, and maximization in which, uh, and to illustrate it, uh, <clears throat> I don't have a pointer, but it's okay. So, as I said, it's an iterative process in which we start from an uncertain model. We have a strategy that can be a heuristic or this explore exploit strategy. Then we actually get these seeds and test them in the real world. So let's say, let's see what happens, right? Once we have this, then we get the feedback some kind of activation feedback, logs, and so on, then we need to, uh, to, um, to update the graph and then repeat this process over our n rounds. So the, the loop is simple. It consists of, let's say, three, three black boxes that we, we, we need. So what's the model of the influence graph? So how do, how do we model this? What is the strategy to to choose the seeds at every step. And once we choose the seeds and get some kind of feedback from the real world, how do we update the model? So I'll take each one uh, at a time. So first of all, the, the, gra the uncertain graph model. So this time instead, uh, we, don't have a, we don't have a given probability of, uh, of influence on each, uh, on each edge. But instead, we can model it as a distribution of probabilities, right? So some kind of uh, every edge can have multiple probabilities, but we don't know which, which yet. So this, uh, in our case, we found that the best, uh, the best way, since this is a discrete process, that activation, not activation, so it's a, we have two binary choices, the best way would be to actually start by modeling each edge as a beta distribution, right? In which you have two parameters of trials, and, uh, of uh, successes and failures. And by default, to simplify things, we associate each edge with a prior probability distribution that encodes whatever we know about the graph, if we know something. If we don't know anything, we can simply choose beta 1, 1, which is the uniform distribution. And so we have that, then, this uncertain graph model allows us to actually explore different assumptions about this, uh, these probability distributions. So going back to this explore-exploit um, trade-off, in the exploit, we can simply think that it's the classic setting that we take the means of, the, of, the, of these pro probability distributions and we do the influence maximization. And Explore uses other assumptions about the graph, I will talk a bit later, but also can choose heuristic strategies, trying randomly seeds in the node or choosing maximum degree seeds, the, the usual heuristics for, for uh, influence maximization. And what's important is that for each branch, uh, this, uh, the IAM algorithm, the influence maximization algorithm we use to actually choose the case seeds is a black box, so we don't really care about it now. So what we are doing in this, in this part is actually to generate an influence graph that we feed to an influence maximization algorithm. 
So only the input graph is different, the algorithm can be the same. So uh, in the paper there are several, uh, we describe several strategies, I, I, I won't go into the details. So they range from epsilon greedy to uh, simple heuristics. And uh, the one we found uh, that it's, uh, it's the most reliable and, um, and works the best and actually has, uh, has guarantees is the confidence bound algorithm for choosing this, uh, this uh, for, from, for exploring these assumptions about the graph. And uh, what happens is that what we do here is that uh, we simply move uh, move uh, the distribution by theta standard deviations to the, to the left or the right. right. So, then we have a, so then we have a vector, a discretized vector of uh, choices of theta values and uh, a vector of probabilities of choosing those theta values. And zero is the exploit because it's, it's the mean of the distribution. Uh, so this is similar to the epsilon greedy approach but it's a bit more, more generalized. So what the, the advantage is, is that actually I can, uh, once I get the feedback, in addition to updating the, the, the influence graph, which I'll talk later, you can actually also update the probabilities of choosing each, each theta value by, uh, by uh, looking at the gain you get from each. Uh, you can think of these theta values as some arms in a, in a, in a multi-arm bandit and then uh, reason uh, like that, and then update the, the, the probabilities uh, as you go. And this can be done by, uh, by algorithms such as the exponentiated gradient, and using this confidence bound in the exponential gradient allows us to have a theoretical bound on the regret, which is the difference between the actual and the expected. Again, uh, for a given choice of uh, constant theta values. So once we have this strategy, we, we choose the K, uh, seeds, uh, we want to test this uh, set in the real world. This can be done by, for instance, asking several people to post on Twitter something and then retrieving the activation log or flyers in the seed and so on. And in this round N, we get the activation feedback, which is basically composed of the nodes which are activated, which are acted, added to the total activation uh, set, and the feedback set, which are, which are edges, uh, which are edges, in, the, in an activation tree that's, that have a variable saying, uh, saying if a successful activation or not has been, uh, has happened uh, through that edge. So given this, we have, um, we come to the last part of, the, of this and maybe the most important to how do we update the model once we have that. So there are, again, there are two, two ways to look at it. One local, in which we simply update each edge that we have in the feedback, and also a global update in which we can try to modify the entire graph even if it's not in the activation, uh, in, the, in the activation feedback. And these two can also be up. So the local update is pretty simple. So we know that the beta distribution is a conjugate prior of the Bernoulli distribution, so the update is simple. We simply Increment alpha if we have a on that on the particular edge if we have a successful acti activation and or increment beta if we have a uh, a failure. So this is the same as counting uh, as simply counting the number of uh, of successful and uh, failed activation niches smoothed by the by the prior we have. But <laughs> what we found out is that they actually. You know, in the, in the real world, the probabilities of influence are actually very low. So at most you get from activation feedback is the hop one or maybe hop two neighborhood, not more than that. So this might be too sparse. You might have some, some, uh, some, um, some edges that have the update and the rest of them use a very rough prior that can be the uniform. So this, this can generate, especially if you do sampling on the, on, uh, for influence maximization, this can also take a lot of time in addition to being uh, unexact. So we want to also actually to go back and update the prior. So we assume that there's some kind of constant behavior in the graph. And uh, we update also the prior using all the feedback history. There are several ways to think about it. What we thought were two ways. So you either 
can do a reasoning in which you write an equation of the spread from a node given the spreads from the, the, the outgoing nodes and uh, after ver various uh, uh, de derivations you, you can uh, basically have a, have a simple uh, logistic, uh, sorry, linear regression with, without an intercept term and then simply minimize the, the, uh, the square of the error between the, or you can reason in a maximum likelihood uh, manner in which you assume that all edges are activated independently and you write the likelihood version, uh, likelihood uh, function, you derive it by, of course, taking the logarithm and doing the, and then you get an equation like this. You can cheat a bit by saying, okay, I can fix alpha to one because I only want what's the probability, so, uh, and then find out what the beta is from, from this equation and update it as such. Um, finally, something that's a bit complementary to all this framework is because we actually had trouble in the, in the experiments to, to, uh, with the running time, is uh, that, uh, okay, each, even advanced algorithms rely on sampling for influence estimate. We did, this is costly on, uh, on over multiple rounds. So we want to do an incremental optimization approach in which we actually, since we do several rounds and at some point our graph might be converging to a stable graph to, uh, to reuse samples between, uh, between rounds from little affected parts of the graph. The details are in the paper and in the extended version. So this actually, the experiments were done on standard influence maximization data sets like collaboration networks, co-citation networks. We found out that the confidence bound actually uh, is the best in, uh, in the, in, uh, for influence, for this painted influence spread, that the maximum likelihood update actually is better than both the least square and the local update only. And that uh, compared to doing this process on the real influence graph, the confidence bound comes close and also that uh, the sample, the uh, reuse saves a lot of time. So for instance, in DBLP, we can have a several hours because I, I remind you that uh, we are doing influence maximization in each round. So we are doing 50 times or 100 times or influence maximization. If you have long graphs, then you have, it's, it's expensive on a single round. If you do it multiple rounds, if, especially with rough probabilities, they can be high, very low. They cannot start be very high. For instance, you can, you can take a lot of time for, for the sample. So of course, uh, there are many research perspectives here. First, the scalability is still a big issue, even more so in this online setting on several rounds. And obviously we would like to, to, to reason about other influence models, but also something that would be very interesting is to remove the assumption that we know the social graph and remove the assumption that we know the influence model and try to, try to also learn those. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any questions? Okay, so let me ask you uh, a theoretician question. Given that you present an online algorithm, do you think it's possible to develop an, al an online algorithm for which we can analyze the competitive ratio towards some uh, Oracle algorithm? Yes, but I, I'm, I'm not sure now of the, the details, but that's, I think that would be the, in a way, the end game that uh, we could find. Because for now, we don't, we don't know exactly how. I mean, we know uh, that the confidence bound algorithm is, uh, minimizes the get, but only for those, uh, right. CETA, only for that kind of strategy. But we don't know which strategy is actually best or if there is a theoretically best strategy. Okay. Any additional questions? If not, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.